Aloha, I'm Kimmy Warner and today I am here with my friend, Chef Mark Noguchi, known as Gooch. I consider Gooch to be our golden child of Hawaii in the culinary oh. world. Everybody knows him, <laughs> everybody loves him, not just because his food is so, so, so delicious, but because his heart is just as ono. And what I want to talk about today is invasive species. These are fish that about 60 years ago were introduced to our islands, thinking it would be a good idea, good addition to our ecosystem. It wasn't. No. no. We can't just wait for, you know, a government agency to now come fix the problem. Right. You know, this we is, gotta do it. we gotta do it ourselves. And so as divers, we try to have invasive species meats. We try and really do what we can to take care of it, but it kind of stops within our own community. What Gooch and his hui is doing will not stop because connecting the consumer to these fish to make people, whether they're tourists or locals, understand how important it is to eat them and how delicious it can be. Mm -hmm. That is what's gonna make this a real movement. That's what's gonna create real change. And so my goal today is not just to get invasive species, but it's to show Gooch this environment I want you to see basically what exactly you are helping every single time you put these fish on your menu. Ta'ape are the fish that we're looking for and I know it won't take long to find them. We're in about 50 feet of water and as soon as we come across some structure below, we can already see Ta'ape taking over the reef. I dive down and they are everywhere. Ta'ape, also known as blue stripe snapper, compete with native fish for both food and habitat. They are literally overflowing out of every crack and cave of this reef. It can be so disheartening to see, but that's why it feels so special to bring gooch underwater. It's so important to take care of our native species and their environment, and it must be done as a community. Ta'ape could be the solution to sustainable seafood and food security in Hawaii. And chefs like Gooch are a key piece of the puzzle to make that happen. I wish every chef and cook could have this experience. It's heavy. I've been cooking for 20 years and I feel changed, you know? What else is heavy? This is 100% <laughs> invasive. It's almost saddening to see that there is one species that was just extra prevalent. I'm so excited to see how you're gonna cook these up in my backyard. And Done. it's a true honor to have you do that. No, both ways, girl, come on. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> We are back from our wonderful day of diving. Let's be real here, I didn't catch any of these. <laughs> but you, you were there for moral support and I needed that in every which way. <laughs> these are the three invasive species that were introduced to Hawaii about 60 years ago. Majority of which we got is ta'ape because that's what we want to focus on. This is a to'au, a beautiful this one too. shallow water snapper. And this thing, this thing is called a roy. It's so a roy. this roy, I feel, is like what gave all invasives the bad rep. It was brought over for it to be a food source. It ended up being so high in the cigatera toxin that it's pretty much no good to eat. People started getting this stigma in their minds of, oh, don't eat invasives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not good for you. Right. It's, it's true for this. It's not true for these. They're excellent food sources and you can actually 
save the environment by eating them. That's the issue, but you are the solution. <laughs> and today's solution will be two delicious dishes. A Peruvian style ceviche and a very special dip. So walk us through what you're gonna do today. Everybody loves smoked ahi dip. Why is it just gotta be ahi? Right, or smoked right? salmon, right? Or Why smoked is it salmon, gotta be right. salmon, yeah. Make ourselves some smoked ahi dip. So this one is, is just like how you're doing, is I'm gonna take some of these fillets, keeping the skin on, I'm gonna season it, and then we're gonna smoke it a low, just till it sets through. So that'll take only about, these things are so skinny, it's gonna take about 10, 15 minutes max. These ones, you're just filleting skin on, you're gonna dry rub it, smoke yeah. it, yeah. make it into a smoke spread because who doesn't want a smoke, Absolutely. smoke fish spread. Right. And then I'm going to skin fillets, get out, make sure that they're boneless, skinless fillets, mm -hmm. and then small dice for Correct. the ceviche. My first introduction to tape was in Waipio Valley. And then when I was in college, um, we spent a lot of time down there. And, you know, one uncle one day, they went diving and they came back. He said, oh, you know, gooch, you know, chota you know, oil on it. This was 15 years before I thought I'd be cooking professionally, and we had fried fish. And it was like a revelation, you know? Okay. It was kind of eye-opening. You know, I would come home from school and walking home from the bus stop, I could smell fried fish as I walked down the road. And my dad would be there in the garage, frying taape in his walk. He would just score them, salt them, fry them, and he'd always just load it up. Because I was right when that sweet Thai chili sauce just my came boy. out. Yes. Took Hawaii by storm. Like, and everyone was just like, oh, this is the best <laughs> thing ever. So he would load it up with that. And all the neighborhood kids would come over and that's what we would eat. For, for me and my dad, like whenever I was in the water with him, just watching him go down and, you know, come back with our favorite dinners. Like it was just something that left such an impression on me. And that's what gave me definitely my love for the ocean. That's what makes it so important for me today to want to protect it and share that same world with my son. You know, while we're prepping this, we're doing two dishes at the same time. So the plan is that when the ceviche is done, that that baby is going to come out as well. It's going to take five minutes and it all comes together at the same time. I just seasoned the tapi filets. I have it in the smoker at about 200-ish degrees right now. You said it yourself, it's taking all these little grassroots initiatives, yep. right? And then strength in numbers, the initiatives become the movement, Yep. right? Chefs are the ones who can save the world. And I believe it because you guys are the storytellers. You guys are the artists. You guys are the ones that are taking these stories, these issues, whatever they are, and putting it on the menu, describing it, putting it in a way that people can relate to it and eat it. And then everything comes down to the consumer. If the consumers actually demand this, that's how real change is gonna get made. We see it happening in, in agriculture very much where people are becoming more and more aware of, you know, how is this plant grown? What was used for this? Therefore, that's what I'm going to ask for. That is what I want. Is it organic? Is it not? We see so much support, so much knowledge, you know, coming from the consumer when it comes to plants. But it's like, okay, if we can just turn on that same little light bulb right. towards fish, right. it's like then people can eat fresh local seafood every day. All the time. While supporting our beautiful oceans. Yep. We're the most isolated landmass in the world, surrounded by all this ocean, and we're importing half of our seafood. Yep. And that's why these fish, ta'ape, I mean, some things are a win-win. But it's just like a win, win, win. Because number one. <laughs> it's a triple bottom line. Yes. Right? Win number one, it completely supports a local economy. Uh -huh. Every single ta'ape you buy, it's going to come from a local fisher uh -huh. person. Okay. Number two, it's like it's food security, right? Because if you're getting rid of that 50% of, of importing, then we are creating our own economy. Food, yeah, our yeah. own food sustainability. Energy, and then yeah. number three, we're getting these things off the reef and saving that underwater ecosystem. Mm -hmm. What we're gonna do next is raw garlic. Okay. So once you get the big pieces like this, then you can start to go like that. And you're just gonna make it nice and smooth. Talk so I found some green chili peppers in your backyard. This is looking lovely. I'm gonna check the ta'ape in the smoker. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. So right now, right here, it's about 
50% finished. It was just some orange and lime juice that we squeezed. Mm. Right, so super, super garlicky. So garlicky, not, but not, uh, not aggressive or offensive. Yeah, it's not too harsh. We got jalapeno and serrano peppers, which is going to give us this vegetal heat. You got the, the green chili peppers, which is that, that in, your, in, in the front. Mm. The jalapeno and the serrano are two different heats that are going to hit you in the different parts of your mouth. Take a little bit of cherry tomatoes. Onions, Beautiful. gotta love onions. Okay, am I spooning half of this on now? Spoon, baby. Oh, yeah. Yo, oh, boy. Good for now, one more. I don't know. Give him one more, why not? Okay. Okay, so bang, you can go with that. Start mixing. More OJ? Yeah, a little more, a little more acid, and we'll let it hang. Let's see what happens. Okay, so Gooch told me to go put this in the cooler. But I have to say, when I look at it, I actually forget that this is ta'ape or, or reef fish in general. And that's something that's so interesting because back in the day in Hawaii, that's what people ate. Everybody ate reef fish. Whereas today, you hardly ever see reef fish on the menu. And it looks fabulous. And cook it I'll up. Cook it now. Okay, shoot. So, Kimmy, we've been going for about 20, 25 minutes. Wow. Holy moly. Super moist. And then right into the bowl once right it's bone bowl, free. Yeah. Yeah. So now we have Five our lovely smoked toppy meat. I mm. right, mild. It's good. It's so good. It's good. It is so moist and delicious. I'm a big fan of mayonnaise, but being 45, I'm trying my best to eat healthier. So I still want a little bit of mayonnaise. I'm right what? here with you. <laughs> we'll take a little bit of Greek yogurt as well. You want to get real fancy, you could make your own aioli. It all works out fine. But let's just keep it simple so that anybody and everybody can do this too. Yeah. A little bit, a little more salt. Fresh pepper. And just enough, you know, mayonnaise slash yogurt to bind it. A little bit of heat. Some hot sauce. Herbage. It's just there. Tell you what, let's go a little bit of acid. Oh, <laughs> babies are juicy. They are. Proteins denatured, right? Yep. Little more opaque. Been hanging out for a little while. You forgot the corn. You can't forget that. Roasted, toasted Peruvian, Peruvian corn. corn. That's like what makes it a true South American ceviche. I'm so excited. Pickled onions right on top. Beautiful. I have never had ta'ape like this before. Ne neither have I. <laughs> I'm going to wait for you. We can experience yeah. our, our first bite yeah. together. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Gooch. Mmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Pickles are real, real key, yeah. Mm. But the acid is Every just... layer is key. And the nice. I'm happy. Mm. The, like the dryness and the saltiness of the cracker, and then the super, super moist dip, and then just to finish it with that crunch and that like. Fresh onion. Right? Nice punch of the pickled onion. Um. It is delicious. So good. I think the for that one. You oh, did that topic good, Gooch. We, we, we did, we did. And I really appreciate that, like as the person that's diving down 50, 60 feet on a breath of air and trying to three-prong these things, like when you treat that fish this well, it makes my heart happy. It like seals the deal. To me, the dive is not done until you are taking a bite that is that good and you're appreciating it that much, so. Thank you for finishing strong. <laughs> Mahalo, I appreciate you. Should we try the ceviche? Yes, yes, let's do that. So rice has been hanging out for about 20 minutes. Mix yes. it up. Yeah. Mmm. Mm hmm You killed it, Gooch. Mmm, the calamansi. And the texture of the corn. It's everything, the corn, yeah. I think it's about Pohana 30 right now. I think so too. Yeah. Well, I just, I really just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know it's not you alone. I know you have a whole community, a whole hui of awesome chefs who are just working to, to get this out to the people. And um, you're doing it with so much love, so much heart. And so really 
Call to action, the least we could do to give back is to embrace this love, embrace this fish, and let's, let's make a demand for it. And this is what, it doesn't just create sustainability, but it, this is what creates a community. Absolutely. It's when we all work together to take care of this beautiful place we live in. Each other. And each other. Mahalo. Mahalo. Mm. Hello everyone, I'm Lee. This is Town Restaurant. Um, this is our Ta'ape uh, fish and chips. Fried ulu, uh, ulu dredge Ta'ape, and malt vinegar ayu. <laughs> Aloha, this is Harrison from Restaurant XO in Kamuki. We got um, the Ta'ape ceviche as torch, Ta'ape head mayo, and some crunchy bones. Aloha, my name is Emily Perkins. I cook with Pili Group and Nui Ke Aloha, and I run a family meal prep program called I Ono with Kulani Ikea. I grew up in the South, so tonight I made Creole seasoned fried ta'ape over nalo grits with okra and tomatoes. Mahalo for watching. Aloha, my name is Bailey. I work at Month and Water. It's a whole fried ta'ape with spicy shoyu. We need to eat invasives, they're sustainable, and there's plenty of them, and they're yummy. Rajana! Mahalo, gang! Cheers!